The focus of this video is going to be on sequences, which you have hopefully already seen. If you don't know what a sequence is, I encourage you to review those videos on Khan Academy. But we're going to focus on how we can generate the same sequence with different functions that have different domains. So let's just start with an example sequence. Let's say we have a sequence. It's a six. You could call that the first term. Some people would call that the zeroth term, six. And then if that's the first term, the second term is now a 12, then a 24, then a 48, and so on and so forth. And as we'll see, there's multiple function definitions that could create the sequence. One way to think about it is this is 6 times 1. This is 6 times 2. This is 6 times 4. This is 6 times 8. So it looks like each term is 6 times a power of 2. Let me make that clear. This one right over here is 6 times 2 to the 0. That's 6 times 1. This one over here is 6 times 2 to the 1st. This one over here is 6 times 2 squared, 6 times 4. This right over here is 6 times 2 to the 3rd. And so one way to view this is if you view this as the zeroth term, we could define a function, call it a of n, where n is referring to our index, or which term in the sequence. And it's equal to 6 times 2, 6 times 2 to the n, where n starts at 0, and then it keeps incrementing by 1. So it's really all integers greater than or equal to 0. And it's very important to specify that domain where where n where n is an integer integer and n is greater than or equal to 0. You could see what happens if n is not an integer. If you tried to put a 1.5 here or something like that, then you're not going to get one of the terms in the sequence. And if we don't start at 0, if we started at 1, then this would be the first term in the sequence, is, which is not what we want. We want to generate the sequence that I originally wrote down. And if obviously, if you started at n equals negative 1, then you're going to get a different value for your first term. So this is one way to, to essentially define or to create a function which generates this sequence. But as we'll see, there are other ways to do it. For example, let me do another one. I'll do it another color. Let's say I have b of n. And let's say I want to, instead of making, instead of saying, OK, I'm going to start at n equals 0, and you could kind of view this as the 0 term, I want to start at n equals 1. So what you could do is, is when you input a 1, this essentially becomes a 0. How do I do that? Well, I just subtract 1 from it. So I could say 6 times 2 to the n minus 1 power where n is an integer integer and n is greater than or equal to 1 notice now when we put n equals 1 in here and we, we could maybe call this the first term we want to generate a 6 so what happens 1 minus 1 we get that zeroth power that we want right over there and so 6 times 2 to the 0 is indeed 6 then when n is equal to 2 it's 6 times 2 to the 2 minus 1 which is just 2 to the first power. So it's just become 6 times 2, which is equal to 12. So notice, these are different function definitions with different domains, but they're generating the exact same sequence. We could also do it recursively. And we've seen this in other videos. We can define a function recursively. We could say, all right, look, it looks like each of these, each of these terms in our sequence is twice the previous term. So we could, if we want a recursive definition, for the sequence, we can define the first term, or in this case, we could say the zeroth term if we want to start at n equals 0. t of 0 is equal to 6. And then we could say t of n is equal to 2 times t of n minus 1. t of n minus 1. And then this is going to be, this is going to be 4, or maybe I'll write it this way where n is an integer and n is greater than or equal to 0. 
This would also generate the sequence. When you put n equals zero here, you'll get that term. When you get n equals one, t of one is going to be two times t of one minus one, t of zero. In that case, it would be t of, or sorry, it would be two times t of zero is six, so two times six, it would get you 12. Now, if you wanted it so that it generates the six when n equals one, you could do it this way. So let me, you could write it, actually, maybe I should have kept all of that. Wait, I'm gonna have to rewrite all of that. But you could write it this way. Instead of saying t of zero is equal to six, we could write t of one is equal to six. But now I would have to write a different domain where n still has to be an integer. n is an integer. And now instead of saying n is greater than or equal to zero, now n is greater than or equal to one. So hopefully this video hits the point home that there's multiple ways, either with a traditional, like as you say, explicit function or a recursive function like this. And even in either of those cases, you can have different domains and different function definitions that generate the same sequence. But you really have to think about the domain.